Shalom, everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. This is Wednesday Night with Nativ. I am Steve Ambrani, and tonight we're going to talk about energy, life, light, and the calendar. I'm reaching the end of the section talking about energy. This will be the fourth week that we've been working on this. But before we get started, I want to take us back to October 7th, 2023 the day the massacre happened in Israel. I don't know how many of you have been watching the news, but the um, Israelis sent jets to Lebanon, and they also sent a missile by way to Tehran, Iran. <laughs> and they killed, his name is Ismail Hamaye. Ismail is the chief political arm of the uh, Hamas organization. Ishmael doesn't live in Gaza, hasn't lived there since 1996. He's been his spent his life making his money from all of the deals that money goes to Israel from all of these countries or goes to Gaza from all these countries. And so he has two houses. One is, is a penthouse in Tehran, and the other one is a home that he has in Qatar. So that's where he lives and spends his time. In fact, most of the people that are the leaders of Hamas do not even live in the country. They leave it for the soldiers. But anyway, he was killed today. What makes it so significant is he is the planner of the October 7th attack, which happened actually a little before what was supposed to happen, which was a united attack by Hezbollah and Gaza, the uh, Hamas. So he got things a little straightened out. But now Israel is preparing for a retaliation strike from, is from Iran. So we're going to have to watch and see what grows out of that. Okay, having said that, and we'll get back to that at the end, I want to talk to you about energy. And again, I want to talk to you in terms of the letters of the alphabet, because that's where the energy comes from. If you ever read your scriptures, you know that God spoke things into being. He spoke it in Hebrew. Now, to speak something into being means that you're going to use your energy and by using your energy, you need a, a language to speak in. And so Hebrew is the language that, that begins. So I want to make this whole thing roll around the idea of leading us to the calendar. Because the calendar is the final, final part of time and space. You see, we normally think of in the very beginning, two things were created. One was time and the second is space. And if we talk about time, we're not talking about just hours, minutes, and days. We're talking also about months and years. And so we're talking about a calendar. So in the very beginning, we have these three creative powers that come. Um, the word for energy in Hebrew is koch. The word for life is hayot. And finally, the word for light is, is o, or Excuse me. So we're going to talk about those tonight. So physical matter really does not exist as we understand it. It's concentrated energy. You and I really, if we were able to see the smallest part of us, the atom, we would find out that the atom's made up of 99.9% .9 nothing. So truly, when we look at ourselves, we're really looking at nothing, just an image that's being shown to us at this particular point in time. But that image of who you are and who I am came by way of creation. We were created in God's image. But that's what we're going to be talking about. Before I get too far, I want to share with you three of my resources tonight. The Sefer Yetzirah, which we've talked about multiple times. This book is called Direct Hashem. It's called The Way of God. And it's written by uh, Haim Luzado, who was a Dutchman. And the third one comes from Rabbi Ginsberg, because we're going to talk about the alphabet. So I wanted to go to one of the sources that I have. And this one's called The Hebrew Letters by uh, Yitzhak Ginsberg. So I have three sources 
not counting my mind and not counting other sources on the internet that I've looked at in order to reinforce what I know. So physical matter is nothing more than concentrated energy. That is what I've learned as I go through all of the different sites. So energy then creates matter. As energy goes out, energy begins to slow down. And as it slows down, it becomes solid, liquid, or gas. It moves into one of those three categories. And then we go back to the book of Genesis and we go to our first chapter. Lo and behold, that's what we see happening. Because you see in the very first verse, we already know he creates the heavens and the earth. Now, the heavens means there's more than one of them. In fact, I, last time I talked, there were seven of them. But there's also going to be the idea of the earth. Now, the earth comes second. So, obviously, the heavens were created first, then the earth. But then as we go further down, we see that there's chaos on the earth in the second verse. From there, we find out that chaos becomes water and darkness. Water and darkness were upon the face of the earth. From there, God creates light. So again, we now have the substances. From there, we continue on. We create firmament, something solid. We go from solids, we go to the plant life. From plant life, we go to the uh, animal life. And then finally, we end up with human life. But we go through phases, phases as we're going through this. Now, in the beginning, when we start talking about a human, and this became a subject at our dinner table tonight, we talk about man was created in the image of God. Now, in talking about the image of God, I went to the character called Ankylos. Ankylos was a, well, he was a nephew of a Roman emperor. And as a nephew, he converted to Judaism. Now, he didn't study Hebrew, he studied Aramaic. And so when he went and began to look at the scriptures, he began to translate it into Aramaic. And so the verse that talks about the fact that he created man as a living soul in the Hebrew Bible, in Ankylos' Aramaic Bible, he created a speaking soul, language. That's what happened. So he created us with language. Everything was created the same way. Now, the Zohar takes, teaches that, that God looked into the letters of the Torah. And as he looks into the letters of the Torah, he created a universe. Now, this universe that he created is interesting in and of itself. But I want to, for you to understand a few things. First off, let's go back to speech. Now, the word God said, God said, the word said in Hebrew is amar. Three letters, the aleph, the mem, and the resh. Those are the three letters that make up the word. But it's also an acronym. You see, the aleph can be written as or, light. The mem is water. And finally, the third one, which, is, which we talk about, is rachia, which is firmament. So we began on the first day creating two Second day, we added the firmament. So we begin to watch the transition that goes on. Remember, the earth is not 6,000 years old. The earth is more like 45, 50,000 years, as some people say. Others say it's even older than that, into the 100,000s. But we know one thing, that everything started a long time ago, more like 13 billion years ago. So we begin with the three sources. We begin with this idea of energy. We begin with life, and then we begin with light. All of this going this way. Now, you remember when God created on day one, he finished and he said it was good. So we begin with this idea of good. And so I want you to keep was good in mind as we go through this. And I also want you to understand that on the last day when he began, when he finished all of this, he said it was very good. Now, you and I would have a very different time trying to understand what good was compared to the Kabbalist, the mystic, because you see the mystic begins to look at this whole thing quite differently. And so I want to give you some understanding of how a Jewish mind might look at this whole thing. 
First off, he begins by calling it the eye. Mystically, we begin with what's called the secret of the right eye, and then after that, the secret of the left eye. Now, the right eye, according to the to Kabbalistic understanding, was the eye that was used to gaze into the language, into the words of Torah. So he was, this is prior to the creation. Our right eye was seeing what the Torah was going to have. The left eye saw what was created afterwards. Now, if you go back to the Jewish understanding, you also know that the words themselves were created with an element called fire, aish. And again, we begin with the idea, the Torah was written on white fire, and black fire was imposed upon that. And so if you look at your books from now on, maybe you're going to see the white fire, the page, and behind it, the black fire that's imprinted on it, engraved on that. So it's a reality that we're going to be looking at, white fire on black fire, or black fire on white fire. Now, again, they had a different understanding of good. Now, good in Hebrew is the word tov. And so they have a different understanding of tov itself. It's hidden. And their understanding is the sages teach that the good refers to an angel of life. And the very good refers to the angel of death. Now, you and I would just simply say good and very good and keep it in a simple language. But they go beyond that, and they talk about the fact that good spoke of the angel of life and very good spoke of the angel of death. Well, what is so good about the angel of death? What is so good about this whole story? It's prophetic. We begin with life. You and I would think we end with death, but death is only an intermediate that's why it's called very good, because we pass through death into life beyond. And that's the point behind which what they're saying. So the idea is that we're beginning by looking at things. Now, in order to, to look at things, you and I use our left eye and our right eye. If you're a Hasidic Jew, you're going to have a box on your head. Now, the box is in the place where we would call the third eye. What's in that box is significant because you see, before things happened, we had the Torah. After we saw what the Torah looked like here in here was the Torah kept. So our third eye actually has the memory imprint of that, that whole thing. In the, in the stories we're, we're told uh, a rabbi named Hi, uh, Yosef Haim uh, Yerushalmi wrote a book. It's called Zachor. Jewish history and a Jewish memory. Now he taught, Zakor is a very common word. In fact, it's used about 200 times in the scriptures. Zakor means remember. So when he begins to think about the Bible, we have to think about the 200 times that it's written and what are we remembering? Well, if you're a Jew, you're going to remember the fast day or the, the Sabbath. You're going to remember the covenant. You're going to remember the exodus from Egypt because all of those are commands. That's what you're supposed to do is to remember. And he suggests that we might understand these commandments even more as central to survival. It's important to remember the Sabbath, but it's also important to honor the Sabbath. It's important to know about circumcision for some of us. We were circumcised, whether we were Jewish or not, not cor correctly, but we were circumcised. We understand that. And finally, we have to understand the Exodus. Now, some of us, there were Gentiles who exited, but we have to remind ourselves we're part of an Exodus. We don't live in this world. We're sojourners. This is only a stop off point. We had before, here, after. Very good. Now, in this idea of Sabbath, there's a Hebrew holiday. It's called Purim. And the Sunday, or the Sunday, the Sabbath day before Purim is called Shabbat Sechor. In other words, it's a time when you remember. And what are you going to remember? Well, part of the language says in Deuteronomy, remember what Amalek did to you on your rote journey after you left Egypt. How undeterred by fear of God, he surprised you on the march. And when you were famished and weary and cut down all the stragglers in your 
rear. Therefore, when the Lord God, your God, grants you safety from all your enemies around you in the land that the Lord God is giving you as a hereditary, hereditary, yes, a portion of inheritance, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under the heavens and do not forget. Do not forget. Now, let's go beyond that. As I said, this is one of the books that I use. It's called the Sefer Yetzirah. Now, in this book, in the beginning, there's a statement. It begins, we are told, two stones, or Hebrew letters, build two houses. Three stones build six houses. Four stones build 24 houses. Five stones build 125 houses. Six stones build 728 houses. Seven stones build 5,040 houses. And from here, we go on and we can calculate which of the months cannot speak. Or we can speak, talk about that which they cannot speak and they cannot hear. This book is incomplete. It's only six chapters long, and basically, if you put it into just simply writing the verses down, you probably have about 12 pages of information. Originally, when Abraham started this book, he used it as a guide for how he taught his students. Remember, Abraham had students, people who began to follow him. In fact, we know that he even took them to war with him when he went against the five kings, or the four kings. Well, there were 400 chapters in the original Sefer Yetzirah. And so Sefer Yetzirah doesn't talk of just about the calendar. It was a guide for Jews or a guide for those who followed the one true God. That's what it was about. And so there were 400 chapters that were there. So his students, when they graduated, if you want to call it that, when they began to go out and teach others, they had the entire book themselves. They had memorized it. So when we go back to thinking about this book only having 12 to 15, 20 pages, we're only looking at part of what he talks about. And we're looking at what's basically the Sefer Yetzirah is the book of creation. So we're only given just the beginnings of what they were supposed to learn. And so our understanding sometimes gets a little skewed. And so that's why I want to talk to you about the letters of the alphabet. You see, according to the, to the our understanding, it says two stones creates two houses. Well, a stone in Hebrew, or stone in this case, represents a Hebrew letter. So with two stones or two Hebrew letters, you can build two houses. In other words, you can create two different words. It's called a permutation. And so they simply take and permutate a word. According to the, the Jewish rules, you can permeate two letters just two ways. But if you get four, three letters together, you can terminate, you can get six different ways of permutating that word. Six new words from those two letters. It goes on and on until you begin to get as high as you can. Now, the idea behind this whole thing is that we go to the book of Genesis and we go to Jacob. Remember Jacob was on his way to Laban's house when he stopped along the way at what we now call Bethel, where he found himself in the dark outside the city walls, not inside. And so he made himself comfortable and he took the rocks that were there, the stones, again, stones are words. He took the stones, he formed them around his head and he created a pillow. Understand that that pillow that he created by morning was no longer a series of stones, but it had become one stone. And that one stone became what they called the foundation of the temple. So we begin to watch stones, letters, create something else. And so that is the process that we go through. Just like energy going from energy to matter, to something that's real. That's what's happening. So as we go through this story, I want us to understand that what we're really talking about is living substances created from letters. Now, 
Some of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the DNA. I had to study it when I was in my science classes in college, which by the time I finished, I was now teaching to my sixth graders when I got to the elementary school to become a teacher. You and I both understand, hopefully, the fact that originally dad had 22 chromosomes that he donated to the creation of his child. Mother had 22 stones that she, or 22 uh, chromosomes that she donated, or stones if you want to look at it that way. Or you can begin to take those 22 and 22 and you put them together and you get 44. Well, 44 makes a Hebrew word. It makes the word uh, da'am, da'am. Da'am means blood. So we now have created from chromosomes blood. We have changed what the matter looks like. We haven't changed. We haven't destroyed anything. We've just changed it. Again, the laws of thermodynamics. Science is very particular. You can't create something for nothing. The only one who could do that was God, and he did it. And now we're living with what we've, we're now modifying, if you will. So we go through this whole process of 22 and 22. But you and I have 45 chromosomes. Where did the other one come from? Well, it seems that your dad had XY chromosome that he donated, and your mom had an XX chromosome, which she donated, and God put it together, and he created either an XY or an XX. So you now have 45 chromosomes. What do they call it? Adam. Adam. Adam has a has a idea of 45 that's the numeric value of the word for adam adam also has lots of hints involved if you want to make it into an acronym the word adam means adam david and mashiach the messiah three characters well what is that telling us well we know adam was the first and we know at the other end Mashiach will be the last. That's who we go to. That's the end. In between was David. How did David get there? Well, we have to understand that originally Adam was supposed to live 1,000 years for his sin that he had committed. He was only going to be granted a day, and a day with God was 1,000 years. But there was a character that was coming that he already knew about. And that character was coming was going to die in childbirth. But God told him that child is special. And so Adam, according to the Midrash, gave 70 years to that child. Lo and behold, the child's name was David. Lo and behold, that child lived 70 years. That child was special. And that's how he ended up there. Numbers are also letters. Letters are also numbers. So as we begin to read the Bible, we're going to begin to find out that what we're talking about is the idea that sometimes I can find words that have meaning or correlation to other words. Now, I want to take something that is entirely different. If you looked at the first verse of Genesis, and you looked at the first verse of Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20 deals with the Ten Commandments. We know what the first day of what the creation deals with. That's the idea of creation. So the idea is those two are totally different, except they both have the same value. They both have the same value. So we have to be able to make a comparison or an understanding that would involve the idea that creation and the commandments are really significantly blended together. And we should understand that the commandments are not suggestions. They're, they're a part of the creation process. They're probably part of the book of, of uh, Yetzirah that we don't have. But we also can find out that there's going to be other things that are going to be there. I talked about the Mashiach. Well, the value of his name is 358. Did you know that the value of the word for serpent, which is Nahash, the value of that word is 358. So we have Mashiach and Nahash. We have good and evil. 
having the same value. Just like we have in the beginning, the idea of the right eye and the left eye, or the idea of good and very good. Where we started was with Nahash. Where we end is going to be with Mashiach. But we've passed through death to get there. Now, as we go through this, I have something extra I want to talk about. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, I want to talk a little bit about the idea of signs and wonders. This is going to lead us to the calendar, which is where I actually wanted to go four weeks ago, but I wanted to put something in the way to get there. Now, if you go to chapter 1 in Genesis and you go to the 14th verse, in fact, I think I'll go to the 14th verse and read it to you so you understand what I'm talking about. We begin with what's called signs and wonders. It begins by saying, God said, let there be luminaries, lights in the heavens, or light in the firmament, the firmament of heaven, to separate between the day and the night. Ah, thank you, Rod. To separate between the day and the night. They shall serve as signs. Now, the word signs is, is significant. I want you to understand in Hebrew, the word signs is ot, ot, which is above. And can I point to it? Well, I'm not, I, I can't, I can't stop. I got to keep going. So anyway, the idea of ot. He goes through and he continues on to say the fact that these signs were to serve this these oat. And by the way, oat is also the idea of letters. The word oat, the two letters that compose the word are Aleph and Tav, the first and the last. So we have these signs using the first and the last letters for festivals, for days and years, and they shall serve as luminaries in the firmament of the heavens to shine upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great luminaries, the greater luminary to dominate the day of the lesser luminary to dominate the night and the stars. Now, he be began by saying that he was going to create two great luminaries, and then he made one smaller. He caused it to shrink. Now, you may not know this, but in the book of Numbers, they go through this process of what happens at the beginning of each month. On the first day of a month, there are certain activities that were required, especially back then. And one of those activities on the first day of the month was for the priest to sacrifice a goat. Why? For the mistake that God made when he said he's going to create two great luminaries, one to rule the day and one to rule the night. So we have this beginning of the months, the beginning of understanding, the beginning of talking about the Torah itself. Now, these letters then are going to form a foundation. Now, the foundation is, is what we would call form. It's what the Jews call it, form. Form is what's here on the earth. Everything has been formed here on this earth. That's what we see is the formation of things. Above this is the second level. That level is the, the level of Yetzirah. That's the level of ideas. That's the level that it's going to break down into. And above that is the world of creation itself, where everything is determined. And above that is the world of Atzilut, that's the idea of complete oneness. Eventually, God will go down and he will dwell within us in this world. All of us. All of us. So as we begin to look, we're going to look at some things that are going to happen yet future, some things that are yet in the past. Now, I want you to, again, keeping in mind what we call Mazel. Mazel is a Hebrew word. Normally, you've heard the word mazel with mazel tov. Mazel tov simply today means good luck. But mazel was not originally designed for that. The word mazel itself in the very beginning meant a drip from above. 
a drip from above, something coming down, something coming down. That's what we're going to be talking about, something coming down. Now, in order for us to understand what's coming down, we have to understand where it's come from. Where did it come from? The beginning of creation. It's moved across. Everything is now trickling down. It's now trickle down economics. It's the world is being trickled down too. God is inserting slowly into this world more and more light. It doesn't seem like it because we have more and more wars going on, more and more anger going on, even in our United States. But God is submitting trickle down more light into the world that we're living in. Abraham, if you remember, came from a place called Ur Kasadim. Kasadim is the he is the Aramaic word for Chaldees. Ur is spelled Aleph Fav Resh, light. So the light of the Chaldees came in the form of Abraham. He brought light to the world. He began to introduce everyone back to the one true God. And he did that through his understanding of creation. Because you see, he was different than all the other kids. He was also an astrologer. That's a bad word today, but it's a very good word if you're a Hebrew mystic. Because Hebrew understanding of astrology is not the same as the understanding of the horoscopes that you read in the newspapers and all of the other hum mo well never mind i want you to understand there's four basic differences and let me explain them to you the first one is jewish astrology is based on the 12 tribes the 12 tribes and the description of how they march through the desert so in other words we're given an understanding of relationship when we look into the sky you and i when we look into the sky we sometimes see star patterns that's what we're known for mazel comes from created another word which is called mazelot which is the idea of constellations now there are 12 constellations that represent the 12 tribes of israel because you see god each of the 12 sons was born in a different month each son has his own constellation that he works with. From that, we also know that Jewish astrology uses seven planets. It uses the sun, the moon, and the five closest planets. It doesn't use Uranus or Neptune or Pluto. Those planets were too far away when the, when the astrology was originally beginning. And so it works or demands itself to deal with the inner planets. Jewish astrology speaks of reincarnation if you believe it reincarnation but it does not talk about karma and that's a subject in and of itself so i've got to go quick now the purpose of jewish astrology is to make your heim nativ nativ is what we're on it's a path that we're on heim is life so we're on a life path so the purpose of Jewish astrology is to help you stay on life's path, to make it easier and better for you. So that's what it's all about. So when we begin to go through this, we have to learn how to stay on the path. How do we stay on the path? We go to our third eye. We go to the Torah. We try to go not just simply upon the words and, and stop there, but we go into the words. We go into the letters. We go into the numbers of the letters. That's not easy. For me, it's impossible, but I, I, I fumble through it and I make you people feel good about it. But anyway, as we're going through this, what I want you to understand is, is that the simple text is not the only text. God has put these words together on four different levels. The simple level, the hint level, the par parabolic level, and the secret level. Those are the four levels that you can read as you're reading through the text. And so sometimes as you go to a, a site, which I like, which is called Kabbalah Online, 
which is also a part of Chabad, you can begin to look at writings from the masters and the writings begin to talk about the simple, the, the remez, the hint, the drush, the parabolic, and then finally the sod. So that's where I go to, many times to understand. So as we're looking at this, we begin to understand, well, hopefully, that our whole world came or our understanding of what's going on in Judaism really came from Abraham. Abraham was the father of all this. Abraham's the branch by which we're con connected to this tree that's been created. That's where we start from. Now, the book of Yet Sefer Yetzirah eventually became known as the book for the School of Prophets. School of Prophets. In the book of Kings, Second chapter or second book of Kings, the second chapter, Elijah created schools of prophets. Now, the tool that he would have used was Sefer Yetzirah. That was the tool by which he taught, using now the Torah for its aids in going through this. But that's where he would have gone to get his information. Something extra. Adam in the beginning had the potential of every person, but to him, according to the Yarazal, was he had something extra. His name, again, Adams, was an acronym, telling us he combined himself with all people from the beginning to the end. Now, we can easily understand that Adam will eventually lead us to the Messiah, but what, and, and we talked about David himself. But now let's go beyond that, and let's go into the understanding of these wonders and these signs that he talks about. Now, as we go to this, we're talking about wondrous signs are related to our soul. In other words, our soul is impacted by the things that we learn, the things that we see. Also, it's beyond that because we also have to look at things we see once in a while. You and I have seen an, a rainbow before. Now, most of us would see the rainbow as a good sign, good luck. But how did the rainbow get started? It didn't come until after the flood. That's when the rainbow was created. So the rainbow is, is a part of the understanding of what we shouldn't be about. We know there are seven colors in the rainbow. Did you realize the seven colors speak to the seven laws of Noah? We continue on talking about the idea of going further into the text, going further into understanding. Now, as we go further, and I'm going the wrong way in my notes, I want to I want to read a section to you that came from from my understandings in the book of Derek Hashem, this book. He notes that the rabbis of the Second Temple and afterwards taught that astrology does not apply just to Jewish people or to Jews at all. This teaching conceals the spiritual law which I want to share with you here. Each person chooses the most appropriate time and place of birth. Did you hear that? Before we were born, we chose what time we were going to arrive, what day we were going to arrive. Imagine that. Imagine we had already gone through that. So we chose the appropriate time and place of birth so that they can achieve our tikkun, our redemption. And it had to occur during this lifetime, according to the Arizal. Astrological influences affect every human being and are used as tools by Hashem to create each person to situations and conditions that they can be used to achieve his or her tikkun. All the things that have happened to us happen to us for a purpose. Everything is purposeful. All of it is to help us reach our point of redemption. Now, when one uses the Kabbalistic tool of restriction, and that's a whole book, and it's got 19 chapters in it, so I'm not going to spend any time with that that whole idea. But the idea is when you spend your time there, 
by rising above the astrological influences, we begin where we bring mercy into our lives and actually change the movie of our life's influence. An example of this is the story of Abraham using his Jewish astrology reading, at which first determined that he would not have children, yet Hashem showed him that in doing so, changed his name to Avraham, allowing him to rise above his astrological influences and achieve the ability to have a son who was to be named Isaac. Laughter. Our names are not by accident. Our names are purposeful. Our parents may have thought there was a cute name or it was a special name, but they're not an accident. Even in our names, there is an influence that goes on. Now, astrology, the idea of astrology is found in a number of modern Jewish understandings. In fact, the prayer called Kiddush Lavana, which is the sanctification of the moon, which where they sacrifice the, the goat for the mistakes of God. It's hard to imagine God making mistakes. It was intentional. He goes on to say at that particular point in time, may it be your will, O Lord, my God and God of my fathers to fulfill in the darkness of the moon that she not be diminished at all. And let the light of the moon be as the light of the sun and as the light of the seven days of creation, just as she was before she was diminished. Did you hear that? Before she was diminished. Now, the key to understanding this is the word mazel. Actually, today, we can also use the word mazel, drip down, as a constellation, as a planet, even if you want to go that far. So the connection is back to that which is natural. That's where we're going with this. Everything about this is a flow. Something is flowing as we go through this. Now, in our story, we've created a calendar. And let me see if I can get my calendar up for you. There it is. Here's my calendar. Now, as you can see, it's basically the 12 months of the year. It's given a Hebrew name. Actually, it's not a Hebrew name. These are Babylonian names. They were just adopted and, changed and used this way. But what I want you to look at is the outer circle. You see, every month has energy. Each month's energy is not the same. Energy changes. There are three months that have a low energy. Can you see the month of Tammuz, which is the month we're in? The month of Av. Notice that neither month has any celebration. All you have are fasts for what occurred. There's another month that doesn't have anything at all. Completely empty. Now, it's empty now, but in the world to come, it's going to be filled. Because you see, this month is the month called Hish, Hishvan or Marhishvan. This was the month of the flood. And so there's nothing that is happening here. But if you go to the book of Kings, you'll find out that Solomon took seven years to build a temple, and the temple was finished in Heshvan. But he chose not, not to uh, use the temple until the month of Nisan. Therefore, Nisan is the beginning of the months of the religious calendar, the beginning of the temple. So there are three months. These two have low energy. This month has mild energy. And the rest of the months have better, greater energy. Now, if we lose, use the, the moon as our guidepost, we should understand that the first 15 days are what we call the waxing of the moon, the growing energy level of the moon. Then the four, last 15 days are the shrinkage of that idea. But we understand that at the beginning of the month, more energy was introduced into that month. 
except for Heshvan, Tammuz, and Av. Trickle down. Trickle down. Now, I want us to, to understand something else. On October 7th, I can take this down now. On October 7th, 2023, a terrible thing happened. By chance, by coincidence, wasn't a coincidence, but it was the first day after the completion of Jeremiah's 70 weeks of years. For that whole discussion, you have to go back to my studies on Daniel 10, 11, and 12, where I go through and, and map it out for you. But this is the first day after. We are now in another time, another place. We've moved on from there. We have to understand that the, the October 7th was a day that was called uh, Shemini Etzret, which is the eighth day assembly. The eighth day assembly is also referred to as uh, Sukkot Torah, the idea of the starting of the Torah, or Simkat Torah, the beginning of Torah. Now, as we go through this, we have to understand to begin the Torah is a celebration. On October 7th, which was that day, lo and behold, there was an attack. And the attack took care of what would be called a, uh, a memorial. It was a day of celebration, celebrating Simchat Torah. Now, what happened on that particular day, there was a music festival. The music festival was called Nova. It was near, not in, the Gaza area. They broke through fences and they went in. But the, the festival was supposed to be a festival of joy. And it probably was. The only problem was it was not celebrating Torah. Because you see, one of the centerpieces of the dance floor was the statue of Buddha. What does Buddha have to do with Torah? I think that's why it was celebrated. That's why it happened the way it did. But as we go through understanding that there was something going on. Now, as that day should have begun, it should have had a, a first service, which would have been called Yizkor Memorial Service. The Yizkor Memorial Service is the remembering of those ancestors who had already passed on. It was a time for people to begin to pray for their heritage, where they came from, the people that were a part of it. Yizkot Torah actually began during the Crusades, during the mass killings by the Christian Crusaders. That's when it started. And the whole thing is about forgive thy people whom thou hast redeemed. Goes back to Judges 21. The Day of Atonement happened eighteen, eight, nine days earlier. Now we're into a point of talking about what's next. The answer is right now, I don't know. But I do know, as Nikola Tesla told me, creation is about energy, frequency, and vibration. We're in a point at the end of a month. Soon we'll be going into Av, which is another bad month that begins with the end of the celebration of fastings. But it gets better from there. And we move soon into something entirely different. The energy will be different. Each and every one of us, each and every day, have the ability to cause high vibrations. We choose how we're going to act and how we're going to receive what's going on. If you want, you can always go to the internet, to the YouTube, and they will give you frequencies that will help you with everything from sleep to a penal gland, help you read and understand the Torah better. But the idea is the fact that you and I are going to determine, along with all the Jews and all those others who believe in the one true God, 
we're going to determine what's going to happen because we change history. Okay. I've talked for 57 minutes. I guess it's time to quit. And open it up if there's anybody who has anything they'd like to say or questions that they would like to ask. And I'm going to unplug myself and take off my ears so my wife can hear what's going on. 